spend my day working with technology companies in Silicon Valley. And by and large, a lot of those people are quite young and a lot of those people are quite male. <laughs> And I'm used to it. I'm, you know, I think that uh, having grown up here myself and having started a company in the Valley, I'm very comfortable being the only woman in the room. And I sometimes don't even notice it. I think the only time I notice it is if the other people in the room notice. I'm on the board of a company called DMGT. And I'm the only female director and the first one in their 116 year history. And so I, it was very funny right after my first board meeting, one of the other board members said, well, how does it feel to be the only woman in the room? And I, and I looked at him and it was the first time I thought of it. And I said, well, it feels like it always does for me <laughs> because I am always the only woman in the room. So now that is changing and I'd like to see it change. And I hope that I am participating in making that change by helping other women um, achieve career opportunities and, and always trying to look for other women to serve on boards and do things like that. But uh, in the meantime, I think if, if one wants to play in this industry, you have to be very comfortable walking in the room and being yourself and not letting it bother you if you happen to be the only woman in the, in the room. There's clearly a youth culture in Silicon Valley and youth is celebrated and there's a certain even a belief that only the young people really get it. So, uh, again, I think you can either try to pretend you're not, and you can try to act youthful and be who you're not, or you can embrace it and recognize that you bring something to the table that the younger people don't bring, and they bring something to the table that you don't bring, and you're all there together to make the best of it that you can. I don't really feel age discrimination. I mean, I'm in my mid-50s, and I think that because I stay current and I have a pretty current understanding of what's going on in technology, because I do serve on multiple boards and I get that perspective, uh, that, and, and I also teach at Stanford, so I'm in front of a room of 50, 19 to 25 year old engineers twice a week and I carry on a discussion with them. I have teenage kids, one college student, one high school student, so I feel, um, Number one, I don't feel disconnected from people who are much younger than I am. Number two, I don't disrespect them. I believe that people, regardless of their age, have tremendous talent, vision, passion, tenacity, things to contribute. I don't feel that there is sort of an age, you know, it's not like Disneyland, you must be this high to ride this ride. You know, I, I think that my approach to this is be myself and be comfortable and, and be relevant, right? Be current, read, use technology. Don't, don't be the person that, that, you know, there are jokes about, particularly in, in some of the, uh, I will just call it corporate America, older white male uh, dominated boards where they joke about, you know, they write it out longhand and their secretaries type it into their email systems for them. I mean, don't be that person, right? Use the, use the stuff. I feel really lucky that when I look back at my life, there's nothing I really want to do differently. Every success and every failure helped get me to this point in my life where I am. I read a book recently about, um, about the crises we face in life and about how to find happiness. And one of the points that the book had that really resonated with me was this idea that um, if you ask people what was the best thing that happened to them in the last five years and what was the worst thing that happened to them in the last five years, they're often the same thing. Because often those cataclysmic changes in your life bring about some of the best positives. So when I look at that, uh, what that has led me to do and the advice I would give to, particularly to younger women, I, I meet with a lot of uh, students and graduate students and, and particularly at Stanford, whatever, you know, if you're at Stanford, you're already guaranteed to be sort of an overachiever type A person. And what I find with these women is they're so concerned about they gotta get the right first job and they gotta get they gotta go to the right graduate school and they gotta they've gotta be at the right company and they've got the right title and and oh my god if they make a mistake, you know, if they get fired, oh for, forget it. If you get fired your life is probably over. And and I have to tell them all the time, you know, don't worry about it so much. You can have a plan, and I think it is important to say, you know, where do I want to be in five years, where do I want to be in ten years, and you have to, I think, and I have always in my life sat down every year and thought, where do I want to be in one year, five years, ten years, because I think it's a very important thing to do, because some things, for example, public company corporate governance, you do not just get up one day and say, I think I'll try that, right, you have to build a, 
a, a resume that points you in that direction. You have to kind of build experience in a book of business and start with smaller boards or start with nonprofit boards and, and do things to get you there. So you can't not plan. But I think that, that you have to be open to serendipity and you have to be willing to take risks on things that you might enjoy or that you might not enjoy or might not be good at. In fact, you might get fired from those roles. And I've certainly been fired from result roles in my past and I consider those learning experiences very good. So if you can be that kind of lean in person who can take those experiences and if you fail, recognize that it isn't personal, failure's part of the process, what did you learn? and move on, that that can be much healthier than being so rigid about what you need to do, what job, what's the right place for you to live and eat and this and that. I just think you have a better life if you allow yourself to be a little more open and a little bit more flexible. Because those people who try to tightly control and constrain their lives, I don't know anyone whose life turned out exactly the way they planned it. And in fact, some of the unhappy people I know are the people whose lives did turn out pretty close to how they planned it, right? You know, the world is changing, we're changing. You can't stay the same. And if you stay the same, you'll be obsolete. So I feel like I constantly have to reinvent myself and renew myself and learn new things and, and put myself in new situations because if I didn't, I would just stagnate and life would get pretty dull. And so when you do that, you you do sometimes make mistakes, and if you're not willing to make mistakes and look a little foolish once in a while, you're never going to have those wonderful experiences.